Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Human Colony Saturday webinar. Today is February 4th, 2017, and we have Jim Charles joining us again to channel. Hi, Jim. Hello, how are you? So wonderful, so happy to have you here, and might I add, happy birthday two days ago. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I know you got a whole bunch of uh, birthday wishes flooding in, and I think they will continue because you are amazing, and we are so blessed to have you with us. So um, just oh, wanted to, to give you a shout out there, Jim. Um, and so I'll quickly go through some uh, events that we have scheduled, and then we can move on to um, some blessings before we get started. So uh, we do have some pretty cool people booked up coming pretty soon here. Um, every Friday afternoon at, well, the time changes, but I'll just say for now, every Friday afternoon, we are doing Human Colony book meetings. Um, we are transcribing videos of channelings from different channelers and Jim's channelings into a transcription book format, and we're going to be publishing a book, and it's very exciting, and we definitely need help. This is on a volunteer basis, like everything we do, so please, if you would like to get involved in that and be a part of the book making process, please um, you can contact Max at humancolony.org in order to um, be a part of that because it's important to transcribe this information into written format. And same goes if you would like to translate any of it, please let us know. We, we need translators. We don't want this stuff only out there in English. It is so impactful. Um, and then also we have um, Sunday, February 12th, Brooke Alyssum is going to be joining us again to channel. Max is going to be hosting for her at 1 p.m. Eastern. And on Saturday, February 18th, Sean Swanson is coming to channel for us. He is a, a well-known channeler of Issue of the Yael, and um, he is channeling 5 p.m. Eastern and both Max and Jim are going to be hosting for him. So that is going to be cool. You can go to humancolony.org in order to stay up to date on our current events and our calendar and everything. And if you ever want to get involved in any of these events that we're doing, you can go to humancolony.org slash jump and get the participation link so you can join us. Um, is there, are there any other announcements, Jim, that you have? Uh, not that I can think of right now. Okay, yeah, it sounds like you've been really busy recently, which is awesome. We appreciate um, everything you're doing, the private sessions and everything. So if anyone would like to book a private session with Jim, which I will say again is amazing because Jim is amazing and he's able to channel a whole bunch of different awesomeness, um, you can reach out to him, jimreiki at gmail.com. Correct, Jim? That's right. Okay, awesome. And then you can also find him on our website, humancolony.org slash Jim. So check out what he offers on there and please contact him because uh, he's absolutely fabulous. So um, awesome. Then moving forward, I think um, we did have some requests already come in that we had spoken about and um, we'll have to see. I haven't seen any more requests since that. Um, oh, well, I will read this. I don't think you heard this, Jim. Uh, let's see, we had a request for a panther being called Hisk. Um, the Blue Nova Triad Collective, the lion beings, um, Thorax in particular, um, Anubis. Um, let's see, we had requests for definitely to Kerr or somebody who's able to talk about all of the interesting stuff going on in the world, particularly in America recently. Um, let's see, uh, the Galactic Federation of Light, I believe, was requested. Um, and Albert Einstein and Albert Einstein's wife, who supposedly had a lot to contribute to some of his ideas. So, that's interesting. Um, yeah, so I think that's about it for the requests. Um, and with that said, I believe we can probably get started with blessings, as long as nobody else has any um, other things to announce or add. 
So except for the introductions, you didn't introduce your people. I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder, Jim. All right. Um, today, this morning, we have Angie with us, Astrid, Carolina, Christine, Damien, Holly, Jim, uh, Janirhar, Joayo. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing these. Uh, Krellick, Liney, Michelle, Pete, Rebecca, Rhea, Sam, Sheer, Stephanie, TC, Sheena, and myself, Bree. And then, Jim, who do you have in the room with you today? I have Angie and Lana and Erica and Carolyn and Ray. Okay. Hey. hey. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hello, Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Lana Ryabova, yes, yeah, somebody's wearing Lana. Yes, Lana. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Oh, awesome. And yes. Hi, everyone. Say hello. Hi. Yes. Lana's here from um, down south, so we're happy to have her here today, our special guest in the room. So. Yes. Anybody? Miss that and, girl. Uh, so now we can do blessings. Yeah. Is anybody volunteering? Me. Well, Angie in the room here. Yeah, Angie, actually, if uh, Angie would like to start us off, that would be amazing. All right, Angie, start us off. Tita <laughs> As we launch yet another set of prayers in your direction, we are happy that you are manifesting love, joy, peace, and happiness, wisdom as well. We know now that you are on your way but the prayers will not stop, and neither will the joy. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Oh, that was sweet. Thank you, Angie. Okay, uh, Michelle said that she would be willing to do a toning blessing for us. Very good. The half <laughs> It is the song of renovation, lifting up, bringing into the light the things that have been dark in the past. But now you will see in a brighter light the things that are happening, and your eyes will open unto the stories of the truth, and it will not be covered by the darkness any longer, and negativity will pass alongside, and you will move through it like you move through the air. Be of good spirit and move forward as you are alive in the light. Oh, wow, that was absolutely gorgeous and very fitting. Thank you so much, Michelle. Beautiful. All right. Um, I think we're just about ready to move forward, unless um, there's anybody else who would like to give a blessing. Um, I will do one really quick, and then I think we can get started. 
Let me speak clearly. You are awake and your mind is filled with new thoughts. This is a time of change, a time of resurgence where you will find new energies within yourself. But also the old energies are becoming changed as well. And you will find that you are a new person and a new idea is being born within you. This idea is the idea of the future and it is the idea of connection and community. Oh boy, thank you so much, Jim. Awesome, and uh, Brian. Brian just um, said he would like to give a blessing before we get started. Please go ahead, Brian. Hello there, can you all hear me okay? Yes. Yes, yes. hi, Brian. Hey, hey, hey. Mm, all right, one second. Shilio koto noa sataya. Ilianna ni agat ko rata sohua. Ishilia takatian ya tataya. O solo toto ni kia tataya. Salasha katan wataya. Ia sala koto husho to anane. Ia kakao shotaye anane. O ko toa. Ia sataye. We are clear that caution has been given, but we are of the joy that you are feeling. Lift up seriously your joy to God and let seriousness be joyful. And joy enter all parts of your life, for you will be enlightened and your vibration will take on the qualities of joy. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brian. Very cool. Um, okay. Uh, Rebecca actually said she would also like to provide a blessing. And then, Jim, you can go right ahead. So <laughs> go ahead, Rebecca. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I always like to do mine in a little bit of a song and a tone, um, not exactly 100% where it's, I was told it was kind of mermaidish, but we'll see. All right. Okay. Hana mehia kenas me, mana mehia humana te, hana mana sena me, hana te amena ne. Thank you. Thank you. We move as in water. We are the liquid vibration of the universe. And the sky is full of us and the eyes will be looking upon us as we look upon you. Let us become part of you, and let us help you to rise up, because our vibration and your vibration can get along and be in happiness and joy together. Much love to you as you gain your vision. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. Gorgeous. Okay, well, um, let's do the rest of the blessings at the end, please, for anyone else who uh, wanted to. I think it's about time to get started for Jim so that we have some great information come in today. So, um, okay. Jim, please go right ahead. We are looking forward to it. Okay, thank you. And, um, I will do a couple seconds here of uh, meditation so and let whoever's coming in first 
have a chance to get established. And I will see you all later. Have a wonderful day. Greetings. I am Takur. I have come to update you on many things. First of all, the fourth dimensional anomaly has passed. It left your solar system just today, but it had left your, your planet um, yesterday around noontime on the west coast. That would be Pacific time. It is now on the other side of the, the sun, and so therefore we are back into a normal rotation around your Earth, about 72,000 miles away. It's much different than being almost 10 million miles away, for we are much greater communicators at this distance than we were at the other. Still, there was healing and still there was infusions given, but this is a much better place to be. Now, many of you have not yet felt the effect of the cloud leaving. That's because there is a lot of fourth dimensional residue and it will dissipate slowly. Do not expect a great amount of roughness as you come out of this time because Mother Earth has gained a great deal of fourth dimensional energy and so has the solar system. So therefore you have been supercharged in some ways with it. And this is a good thing because it will help you to grasp some things that will be coming shortly in your energy fields. Now, as far as world history is concerned, you are moving into a very interesting time where many things could happen and it is an unstable period but we predict that at about a 72 percent chance that things will work out for the best in all situations it would appear that the actions of many people around the world including your president are trying to be uh, truly intentioned in a positive way. When things are done with truly pure and in positive intentions, they have a greater outcome than when they are done out of selfishness or with bad intentions or just to make people go away or be quiet. So therefore, the things that are happening around your earth right now are truly intentioned in a positive way for the most part. Now, you cannot say that about all places, but you can say that about the places that are being most active right now. Now, there are a few negative areas, of course, there always will be, and this will never stop, but it is what it is at this time and we will not report anything negative because it has not yet happened now is there questions yes to Kerr. hello um we are getting some questions coming in um i know that there were multiple people that were just asking for a general update regarding um, as they're quoting it, the chaos that has been happening recently since the new president there elected and just chaos. everything. And it has been dividing your nation, which is not a positive thing. However, with the great um, amount of positivity that you can provide, there will be some improvements. Now, not to say that there will not be rough times. With this kind of a divide in the nation, there will be some problems. 
But you must understand, opinions must come together in some way. Opinions must um, be peacefully and calmly discussed. There are resolutions. Yes, always. What are the questions? Um, okay, so we had a question come in um, asking, um, Andreas was asking if um, you're able to illuminate us regarding the recent false flag attacks they had seen on Farsight's Time Cross project that there might be a major one in DC coming up soon. Any insight on that at all? Don't be deceived by any false flags. But you, you see, as things are reported by your medias and medias around the world, you will have to examine them all to find the truth. Because the truth will be a mix of more than one reporting. One reporting will not give you all the truth. But you must look and see what others are saying as well. In the Americas, the reporting there is very slanted. And some for uh, liberation and liberalism and others for conservatism. So therefore, they will slant their message to fit their needs and fit their agenda. So you must look around the world at more neutral places where some of these news things are being reported. It will let you know if they are false flags or not. Many things that are reported as false flags are actually not. And some things that have not been reported as false flags are. That's how clever they are. Remember, don't jump to any conclusions immediately. If someone says it's a false flag, do not accept that at face value. Find out for yourself. Pray and find out if, indeed, these, this is what is happening. Because many have died, but some refuse to believe that they have even left the earth because it was reported as false. Now, there have been deaths that have been in false flag situations, but they wanted these people to die anyway. They were targeted long ago and so they saw an opportunity to make a false flag out of these particular assassinations do you understand yes. so do yeah. not jump to conclusions because of what someone may say or the channeler may say oh it's a false flag because you must find out for yourself how it resonates with you, and then check out some other reports from different places. I know that's not always easy, but your news reporting in your country is very slanted. Yeah, to say the least. Um, <laughs> but hopefully that's getting better over time. You know, people are starting to realize there's been a lot of deceit, so. Well, there is. A great divide in your nation and yes. this is not going to change for a while because the the liberals and the conservatives are at odds with what should be and those that are liberal understand some things that are not progressive and those are con that are conservative are going more by their belief systems and their fear oriented uh, lives than they are by what would move the country forward. Not to say that the liberals are all right. That is not what I'm saying. But you must get away from the fear-based society, from the things that aren't true that were taught to you, such as prejudice and arrogance. And some of these religious um, ideas are not all fully Correct, and you must understand 
that the truth is somewhere in between the liberal and the conservative. Yes, definitely. Um, it's interesting. It's very interesting. Um, okay, well, thank you, Takur. We uh, do have a question from Krelik. Krelik. Yes, hello, Takur. Greetings. How are you doing? I am well, thank you. Um, I'm looking to um, better myself uh, telepathically, and I've been doing some uh, meditations recently. Um, how can I um, how can I better uh, increase my uh, telepathic abilities so that I'm able to receive them better? Check on your uh, telepathic abilities by when you go into public. I believe that you are a student. When you enter your classroom, stop and sense what kind of atmosphere is there. Sense and see if you feel tension or excitement, joy. What is it that you're feeling in the atmosphere around you? If you stop and pay attention to what you are sensing around you, sometimes this will give you an indicator of how sensitive your telepathy is. If you can walk up to someone in public and feel some of their emotions or know what they are feeling in some way, perhaps your telepathy is well on its way. Now, if it is not well on its way, you will not feel anything different. You will probably just feel that you are walking into a room and that it is rather normal. But every room is charged in a different way. Why? Because everyone's karma in the room makes up the temperature of the, the room as far as uh, what it is feeling. And there are feelings in every person being expressed at all times. So when you walk into a room, if there's a great deal of excitement, joy, or tension, you should be able to know it right away. This is because the karma of the room is all mixed together and bringing out a certain feeling or tension or joy or whatever it is, vibration in the room. Your, the karmas are what make up your society as well. When you go into society, all the people in the world's karmas mix together to bring energies to the cities and energies to the different places that you go to. You will notice at times when you go to different places, there are energies that are very obvious, such as excitement or good feelings. And people are that have go that go to these places are expressing that karmic release of good and energy and things of that nature. And so it will be passed on through that edifice or building or that atmosphere which is around these particular things that they are enjoying. Now, you will go to some places such as a courtroom or somewhere of this nature and perhaps feel very tense because this is what the karma of the people are releasing. Their uncertainty, their stress, their um, feelings of fear and things of that nature. Does this make sense to you? Yes. Uh, sometimes. Therefore, you can actually change some of the atmospheres that you go into by being positive, by a understanding that your karma mixed with theirs will help it to change. And if you go in with positivity, where there is a great deal of negativity, there you will make a difference because positivity always overcomes negativity unless you give into it. But do not give into it so that you may be the greater of the energies. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, could I apply that concept to, uh, uh, to aliens too? Of course. Aliens have karma as well. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I would like to ask to Kerr if you could please elaborate in any detail about where we're at with uh, Trump, because I thought it was interesting you had said that he had left the government meetings back in December with the extraterrestrials and other alliances. Um, he left early and that he was a little bit, mm, maybe uncomfortable is the right word. So I would like to ask if you could give any insight on where he's at with that type of information and if he has, because he, I think he said in his inaugural speech, um, something about unlocking the mysteries of space or something like that. Could you go into any detail? Yes, I can. When he was, you see his first encounter with information about aliens and space travel was when he spoke to Obama in their first meetings together. He was uh, given debriefing about many things that are happening. And this was very, very humbling because it is, um, it is a tragic world that you live in in many senses, also a beautiful world. However, that was his first interfacing with um, the thoughts about alien encounters and things of that nature. Then he went to the meetings and was uncomfortable because this was not in his comfort level, not something that he's ever dealt with before, not something that he really wanted to deal with at this time. However, he is now aware that he will have to deal with it. It's not going to go away. It is part of uh, his responsibilities to acknowledge all things that are true, real, and under his jurisdiction. So therefore, if there is an alien uh, crash or some aliens in custody or alien autopsies being done, if you will, he may not know about them all immediately, but he knows that they're happening in some sense because he was told about how these things are done and he has to know how these things are done to be able to govern properly. Now, he is also going to be visited by aliens and he was told that by President Obama because every president is going to be visited and has been visited by at least one extraterrestrial group um, all through the history of your United States and many histories of other cultures as well. But he is not really prepared for that yet and so no one has visited him yet. Now, I can tell you this, he is a little bit fearful of these uh, coming visitations and also skeptical because I think that he does not really believe that it could be possible at times. But he also has seen evidences that would prove him otherwise. But you know, with belief systems, it's a matter of overcoming the belief system in order for you to be able to carry on properly with your life. So he must, uh, embrace the fact that there are aliens and he knows that we are here as well uh, there have been many debriefings and many many much in co different kinds of information have been brought forth but he is not comfortable with it all yet what was that said to sight or astral that the, uh, they will show themselves, will show themselves as in astral, of course. Yeah. They are not permitted to be sight to sight. There is very few instances of sight to sight. There have been a few last year where they have visited governments on, in the physical, but they were given permission to do so for uh, reasons that I cannot disclose. Hmm, interesting. Um, does Trump know about the colonies? I'm curious. Yes, he does. Okay. 
All right. Well, that's going to be interesting to see how that progresses. Um, what did he mean in his speech by unlocking the mysteries of space in between the lines? There is a secret space program out there, and he knows about that, but he doesn't have a lot of information about it because it is secret and it is a self-run and self-governed area. He does get a report once a year or maybe twice about this particular group and what they are doing and what they've discovered and what the, their advancements are. But he is uh, purposely kept out of the loop there in a very close way because he does not want, uh, and they do not want, him to be able to claim any responsibility for anything they do. Okay. Um, does that is that the same? Does it go the same for the Super Soldier Program as well? The Super Soldier Program is not of the United States. Oh. It is actually of an alien origin. So that is something that's very different. Oh, that's interesting. Um, are we able to get any insight on who that program was started by? Well, there is a galactic war going on, and it's been going on for quite a long time now. There are several different species involved in this war now, and they are recruiting people from all over the galaxies, many galaxies, and in some cases, farther out than you can imagine. But the reason for this is they, they are running out of uh, energies within themselves, so they're recruiting people from other planets to fight their wars for them. And for some reason, some humans have agreed to be super soldiers. Now, it is a very wonderful thing at some point because there are great advantages and disadvantages for it. You can be killed in the astral during these wars and not return to the battles and stay alive in your, in this world, but you will be missing something. It will not be a full uh, engagement into the third dimension any longer. So it is, uh, there is pluses and minuses. Is there are many rewards like that are given, but there is also some uh, problems. Is that what you would consider like a soul fracture? It would be a soul fracture in some ways, yes. But you would still have your soul, of course. Yeah. Because when you leave astral, you don't take your complete soul with you. However, right. you will be fragmented, yes. Wow, very interesting. Um, I know a few webinars ago, you did speak more on this topic and the super soldiers in general and stuff. So, um, The super soldiers are a rare group, and th there's only certain ones that are approached on your planet and those are the ones that have the mental capacity the qualifications the physicality and the dexterity to do what is necessary there are very few that will fit into this because mental ability is the number one thing you must be able to think very very quickly and be strategically minded and the super soldier program is um is that also combined with the transhumanist agenda? The what agenda? The transhumanism agenda um, combining us. Things. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Uh, those are separate things, yes. Because one, they're, they're for totally different reasons that they are, are happening. These are totally different programs for totally different reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, what does Trump think about, um, <laughs> about the transhumanist agenda and is it really as big of a deal as it has been made out to be in some circles? It is, it is a big deal in the galaxy, but not on earth. Transhumanism, you mean? Yes, because, huh. um, I, I would have to go into a lot of things that I really don't want to go into at this time to explain that. But yes, um, it is not a big thing on the Earth as yet. There are other humans in the galaxies 
you must understand there are other uh, people that they call human-like. And so the transhumanism program is not always just about Earth. I see. Okay. Although it is starting to affect Earth. Yeah. Just recently. It's just recently starting. Um, it, um, before we move forward, I, I just have to really ask this. Um, I had heard that the sentient oil, also known as black goo, had been essentially dismantled um, from somebody who is channeling Prime Creator. I would like to ask your uh, viewpoint on that because it seems like it is artificially intelligent from all over and uh, wanted to know if that's still affecting this planet. No, that is a fallacy. Really? The whole thing? Yes. Wow. Okay. Are there other questions? Yes, we do have other questions. Uh, Sheer had a question. Hello, Takur. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Okay. Um, I do have a request for healing. Is it your mother or your father? No, it's actually for Itzhak Herzog, uh, the one known as Buji, the good politician. Bougie? I know who that is, yes. Yeah, he what is, is the problem? Uh, I don't know exactly, but uh, it was on the news that he was rushed to the hospital yesterday. And I know that he's part of the good guys, so... Yes, I understand who he is. We will be able to help him, I believe. Okay, thank you. And is there anything that I should be aware of? Any news? Messages? Not at this time. Okay, thank you and much, much love. Much love to you as well. Thank you. We have a question from Rhea. Um, Rhea is asking, what is happening in Antarctica that is making it a hot spot at the moment? Um, something she said may have erupted there and something was found, something about uh, two very old motherships. Well, there's many things happening in, in your Antarctic area. First, first of all, if you were to look at your planet, there is an opening at the, at the very pole of Antarctica. This is a vortex that goes through the planet in some senses, not physically, but in an energetic way. It goes through the center of the planet. Also, pyramids were found under the surface of Antarctica. A mothership was also found there. And there are many groups studying these things at this time. There are, uh, there's other things there as well. There's, uh, they're studying the evidences of the last ice age there as well. Because the reason for that is, I heard somebody said, why are they doing that? But uh, the reason is that they have found Plants and animals frozen very quickly, which means that when this ice age came on at this particular time, it came on so suddenly it stopped things in its tracks, meaning that the, the, the greenery was still all in place, the animals were in motion, things of that nature. The temperature dropped uh, within seconds. There's evidences of that quickly that an ice age could happen. And when, it, when these ice ages happen, it happens very quickly. They're studying those results. The reason why it's still um, something to study in Antarctica is because it's remained frozen. Other places on your planet will not show those evidences because they've melted, they've uh, been frozen and they melted and they, they uh, have gone through many temperature changes and um, many different things have happened and so um, much of the evidence of this kind of an ice age have been uh, wiped away by uh, temperature changes and climate uh, 
that is uh, uncontrolled in some way over thousands and thousands of years. So your planet is um, also one of the planets that likes to flip over occasionally. After several hundred thousand years, you flip poles. And when that happens, it changes many, many things. But the poles remain frozen. When was the last time we had a pole shift? A what? A pole a shift. Pole. About 280,000 years ago. Are we doing um, another one? There may be an, uh, the, the one that is supposed to occur at this time has been stopped. It was supposed to happen several years ago. The, the poles are off by, a, a, by about three degrees at this time, but we are keeping them in place. And we want this, we want this uh, group of people to survive. We want this planet to survive. Now, that's not to say if it did flip over, everyone would die. No. But quite a few. It would be a mass uh, um, disaster. It's good to know that you're looking out for us. Yes, we are trying. They, uh, they have announced that the polls are off. If you check your um, many of your news sources about your scientific news sources, they will say that it's off, but they only report that it's off a very small amount, but it is actually off a, a full three degrees. Uh, the ships that were found, the mother ship that was found, do you have any idea of what particular group that was thousands of years ago? Um, it, it is not allowed to be mentioned at this time. Oh, I'm sorry. The reason for this is because these are people that seeded the planet, or one of the people, one of the species that seeded the planet, and there were bodies found inside. Yeah, this, I don't know, something's pulling me to this, I don't know why, and um, I feel compelled. The, uh, the information will become public eventually, but at this time it's best that it remains quiet. Hmm. I think they unearthed something on that ship, and that's probably what I'm There's getting. There's something there that is, yes, something that is very um, disturbing, yes. Mm. This is are what there, I thought. Um, are there still Nazi operations down in Antarctica? N not at this time. Hmm, interesting. Mm. Okay. I know that they said a lot of those people went down there for a while, but... They're not there at this time. They've been taken away from there. Oh, have they been replaced? By scientists. Hmm, okay. Um, regarding the, uh, the pole shift, um, is it true that... Uh, I, I'm not entirely sure how to word this, so I apologize, but something to do with the Earth's focal points and um, and Gaia hopefully being able to choose where her next focal points sit at. Can you go into any detail about I'm it? not sure what you're asking, but we the Earth's focal points will not change. We have them put in place at this time. Your poles will not move any farther at this time unless we stop the uh, stop the action that we are taking. But no, you were the earth will is in its natural condition except for the fact that we are holding the poles in place. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um okay, we did have some more questions coming in. Um let's see. We had a question from Martina, she's asking, when we um, last month were out on the field with dogs, we called for our star families. They came and hovered over us. 
I would just like to know who that was. Thank you. That's for JD and Martina. Yes. Uh, your star families, there was, you have more than one, but I know that the, who hovered over you was Pleiadian. They were Pleiadians. Okay. Thank you. Um, and Andreas is asking about the recent, or well, about all the seismic activities that have been going on and if you can provide any insight into um, upcoming seismic stuff. Well, first of all, seismic activity is because of the energies that, have, that are around the Earth at this time. There are so many different energies bombarding your planet, and you just uh, had the fourth dimensional anomaly pass through as well. So there will be greater seismic upheavals in the future because uh, the tectonic plates were affected by all these different energies, of course. Now, some have said that there is a war going on underground. There, That is not true. There is no wars going on under the surface. You would have uh, venting problems with a war going on under the earth. Yes, you might have earthquakes, but if you have explosions and things of this nature, where is the smoke being vented? Where is the energy from the, the war being vented? The, these uh, cavities would be filled with smoke and fire and destroy themselves. If you're not seeing any of these uh, evidences that there's a great upheaval and there's extra smoke coming out of the earth, then you know that these are uh, false accusations. Um, also, with as many as sinkholes as you've had, there would be evidence of technology or evidence that there were other beings under there, and no one has reported that. And it would just be logical that they would, the sinkholes would fall on someone, somewhere. Uh, they just happen suddenly, and if they're having a war, they wouldn't be calculating where these sinkholes are going to happen. So none of this is true. Okay, thank you. Um, we had uh, Timo, TMO on YouTube asking, what were the positive things that the fourth dimensional energy cloud brought to Earth? It recharged Mother Earth. Her as a unit needed the energy. There is many things going on on the Earth that damage the surface of the Earth. And some of it goes even deeper than that. But it is helping to uh, take care of uh, radiation in the oceans. It is helping to heal some of the surface areas that have been uh, very marred. It's also helping to increase fourth dimensional energy in the human mind for those people that accept that. And it, even in the th most third dimensional people, they're starting to see and feel the energies that they have not felt before, even though they will not say that it is anything supernatural, they are feeling the changes. Okay, thank you. It is a positive thing. It has charged the entire solar system. So this solar system is unique for so many reasons. Okay. Um. Jumping back to um, yeah, jumping back to the sinkholes that you had just been speaking about, Sam was asking what caused the sinkholes to happen around the world. There are pockets in the earth that um, are caves underneath the ground, of course, and of course there are some societies that live under these uh, under the ground, but they are several miles down. Uh, most of them, but um, the sinkholes are caused by big gaps of air that are there, but there are some civilizations that go up to these gaps of air under the surface of the earth just to do rituals and things of this nature. There are special areas, but um, sometimes uh, because of the way that or the heaviness of buildings and 
and different things that are happening on the surface, these become more susceptible to uh, fall in. You can look, call, you can read about sinkholes online. Yes, okay, thank you. Um, Christine had a question. Christine, did you want to unmute? Or I can read it for you. Um, sh she was asking. Sorry, my PC is oh. very slow. Um, That's okay. To Kirk, um, I welcome you with my heart. Thank you. Um, I was wondering if the Trump family, if all of them know about ETs, because to me, since they work as a unit, um, perhaps this will change them very deeply. He has not told them all. <coughs> would He's it kept. Help? I'm sorry. It would help. One moment. It would help, but he was sworn to secrecy on some of the things that he was that were divulged to him. But he doesn't want to frighten his family, and his family is um, in a lot of stress right at the moment. So he didn't want to add any of stress to them. But I'm sure he will tell them eventually. But would, right now, the family is very stressed out. Yes, I can imagine. Would it help Byron, his young son, if he knew um, about the healing that is offered to uh, by? Um, Yes, there is, there, he knows about the healing as well, but he does not want to expose his wife and son to that at, yet. Okay. Thank you very much. You are welcome. And yes, I believe it would help his family to know, but they are in a very stressful situation at this time. You have to understand that there are many letters coming to him every single day and to his family that are very negative in in their essence and this is not good for family units okay thank you um Liney has a question yes greetings Liney where are you Oh, sorry, I'm on oh, here. My phone, my phone's ringing. And um, just quickly, um, is there anything going on with um, Area 51 lately? Because I think I was there this week. Area 51. Uh, Area 51 is very active, of course. And the reason why it is, is everybody talks about it. And they figure uh, that nothing is going on there anymore, that the, everything about Area 51 was in the past but not so true. Area 51 is the most active um, alien colony, sort of, in the on your planet for many reasons. They are hiding the truth right in front of your face in a way. Um, there are many, there are many different alien artifacts there. There are many, uh, there are some alien uh, bodies there. They have had aliens there and released them several times. Uh, the secret space program takes uh, aliens that they they uh, find in around uh, Earth to this area, and any crashes, even any part of uh, other than China or Russia or some of the larger nations, all the bodies will come to this Area 51 area. It is the greatest of the scientific study area for aliens. Okay. Very interesting. Sorry to carry on. Um, I, I, was, I just wanted to say, I was there this week, is that right? What did you say? Um, I, was, I was there this week, is that right? There where? Area 51? Yeah. 
uh, you made a visitation, uh, but it was not Area 51, but you did make a visitation to some place that is similar to it. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, it's just um, William said about Area 51, that was all. Yes, it's similar to Area 51, but it's smaller. Area 51 is a very immense, and it's underground. But you were in a similar station in another country. There is about four or five that are major alien retreat centers or places where they have aliens and send them to the United States usually for analysis. Hmm. Interesting. Thanks. Uh, to, to Claire, can I just ask one more thing? Yes. Uh, did I have um, a visitor last night in my bedroom? Yes, you did. And um, who, who was it? Um, or oh, can't you say? Um, it was Penjean. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thank you. That's fine. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. All right, um, Brian has a question. Yes. Greetings, Sticker. How are you, my friend? I am well, thank you. Yes, um, just real quick on tr uh, President Trump. Um, I was wondering, um, is there a higher probability with this president that would be at least reasonably closer because I know he's making a stir up on the energies on the planet I was wondering if he, out of all the presidents that come before him, if this is the one uh, kind of that we've been waiting for that would be a high probability candidate to uh, to help usher in or change to allow more of first contact to take place. Uh, actually, no. Okay. Um, it okay. might happen in spite of him, but yes. um, he is actually more conservative and would not want – to announce that for fear he would be uh, publicly uh, embarrassed. But he knows that they exist and he knows about these things at this time because it was all di disclosed to him. But perhaps his mind will change eventually. But at this moment, he is very conservative. And uh, uh, first contact is not a conservative thought. Hmm. So maybe the, the one after him. Interesting. We will see. Hmm. And my, la my last question, my friend, is um, that which we spoke of before about mm, the last May when we came and visit Jim, mm, the infusion of the Methuselah gene. Anything that you yeah. can give on Brian? Any update uh, for his mm, expansion of uh, the life? For the Methuselah gene? Or anything I, that would I don't uh, think expand. I heard the whole question. That which would uh, expand uh, the life, lifespan yes. of, of Brian. Ah. Any updates? Uh, there is such a gene. There is, it does exist. There, are, there is a species that lives for 20,000 years or so. And that is where it is. That's where this Methuselah gene is. And it was on Earth at one time, but your people could not, uh, the body could not regenerate as well as these peoples could. So they only lived 900 to 1,000 years. So therefore, this gene is not on your planet at this time, but it will, it, I think it was offered to you. Is that correct? Yeah, I've requested it or that which would be modified to allow the expansion of life for for me. They are, the Galactic Council is still very uh, much uh, torn about whether this should happen or not. So we have to wait for a decision from them. And I don't see one forthcoming right now. They are very undecided. Okay. Thank you much, love and light, my friend. Thank you, Tucker. You're welcome. The reason for their indecision is that uh, the ascension must occur in a natural way to the planet. If this gene were introduced to your people, it would change the way things would work in, in many different ways. 
And so they are thinking that after the ascension, after your next step in uh, evolution, then there will be a chance for that to be tested. But they do not want to test it at this time, or at least a portion of them are very uh, against it. Understood. Thank you so much. Much love. You're welcome. Thank you, Brian. Okay. Um, Pete has two quick questions to ask. Very well, Pete. Hi. Hello. Hi. I was one. I came here to ask about since I'm dedicating myself to help the earth and spirit yes. and its vibrations because I feel a massive amount of energy that I send out to to the inner earth so that way it can help regulate and balance it where I'm at. And yes. right now I'm working on a way to step up, so to speak, and in channeling and so to speak. And I was wondering if I could have or ask for an infusion that to allow or to assist me on that. Uh, most infusions from alien sources would help with the channeling situation because most of them would affect the neural part of your body, the, the IQ portion of the body as well. Many times, fourth dimensional energy, when mixed with a hybridization, will help channels to open. But the one that most likely would help would be either Syrian, Octorian, or Fendorian. Those are the higher of the infusions that seem to work with the mentality of humans in the greatest of ways. And so I would suggest Fendorian for you. Not only does it work in the brain and does a wonderful job there and increases the IQ, but it also... Uh, uh, starts the kundalini and brightening of chakras and opening of the third eye and things of this nature, but only as much as the, the human that it's given this uh, hybridization is able to handle for that period of time. And then slowly it works with the system to bring them into a more fourth dimensional understanding and sort of uh, a slight evolution as you uh, as you move into your greater uh, later life yeah because i feel the whole sense of myself be able to handle or withstand a much stronger type of infusion so to speak that's what i feel very well the the first usually the first fendorian infusion is only five or six percent but if if you can handle that and uh, make it work for you, then they may be able to give you more. Oh, okay. One moment, please. Which you have brought us so? Sengi Pratiatros. Chandavaria Tasik. Oh, I did Pete. Kuriakara. Sengi will uh, check you out and see if you are able for that kind of infusion. Oh, okay. And my next question is based on the same subject is how can I direct my energy so that way I can hear or sense the energy presence of of other entities I like to come in and communicate the answer is actually the same those three uh, infusions are the ones that work with the mind and the fourth dimensional energy in the highest regard so if you want any chance of seeing into fourth dimension or seeing uh, aliens or ships or things of this nature, the Arcturian, Syrian, and Fendorian are the way to go. But if you're going to get the Fendorian, I would stick with that one and see how that works for a while. And then if you would like some other, uh, perhaps Arcturian or Syrian, then we can work with that later. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Because okay. Fendorian will open the brain, will open the brain 
it, to a extent that you can handle. If your brain cannot handle it being open to that extent, the third eye, etc., it will not do it right away. It will be a gradual effect. Yeah, I feel more stronger in my third eye that I'm able to direct energy, even through Gaia's energy when it shifts. Very well. Then this should be what you what you would want. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have a question from Carla again. Yes. Um, um, I actually had uh, two more questions, and I will be done for the day. Um, my first one would be to Kerr if there is any uh, messages for me today. Nothing today. Uh, that is able to be said uh, on air. Okay. And my second question is, um, um, I noticed that there are um, a lot of humans on Earth, at least on the surface, and that in the ancient times, there were uh, different species physically on the surface, such as uh, different aliens, different uh, beings, such as mermaids, elves, unicorns, etc. cetera. Um, um, like I think I think what I'm trying to ask is um, how did how did humans become the dominant species on the surface if there were other species I I imagine that um, that they would uh, that they would want uh, to integrate with us on Earth and well, like how did, how did the, the reason humans are the dominant species is because they were seeded to be so they the aliens and species that visited your world were uh, there for a purpose. They wanted to uh, see the human population so that it would become the most advanced. Now, mermaids still exist on your planet, but not in a great amount. They're, they're dwindling in population due to disease and things of that nature. Unicorns have left your world um, and Elves are still there as elementals, but you cannot see them. They're not in the third dimension, but they do help the third dimension in many ways. Um, now, the, the, you have noticed that there are places in your history where there are missing links. Well, some of those missing links will never be found because they advance the species um, hundreds of years immediately so that there would be no missing link that the the evolution would be immediate pretty much and th there are about three or four places in in the in your history where there are missing links now you might say why would they wouldn't they just bring them up to the modern modern man that would be too dangerous and it would not have made sense they had to learn each each of these steps in these evolutions were done and were calculated so that man would develop in certain ways and in certain thought processes. It was done very intentionally and with great strate strategic value. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, jumping back really quickly to what you were talking about with the uh, ships in Antarctica and the bodies found. Uh, Stephanie was asking if the bodies were in stasis when they were found. The bodies were not. They were actually decomposed. Oh, OK. Interesting. OK, thank you. Um, we have a question from Janir Har. Are you able to unmute? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, hi, I'm Janaira. Um, I had a question. I was Greetings. Greetings to you. I had a question. I was going through a very interesting part of my life last year, and I decided to get really close to God, and something wrote to me in my Bible. It was kind of a bright green, um, and I was just tracing, but it was a lot of it. Um, every day I found there was more and more, and I was like tracing these writings, and I didn't know where or who was trying to talk to me. Um, there was one part where it kind of said something that I didn't know what to think of. 
Is there any way you can help? The Bible me? was turning bright green. Did you say? There were words appearing in bright a bright green color, and I didn't know yeah. if yeah if something was trying to speak to me or if that Definitely. was a, something of a negative source. I didn't know. No, it was not negative. Green is a healing color. It was trying to heal you because you had been through something in the past that was uh, traumatizing. Is this correct? Very correct. And Very so correct. therefore the healing green, they were trying to heal you with some of these words. Although what they were also trying to do is let you realize that it's not necessarily just in the Bible where mm -hmm. the truth is because they were showing you that there is something outside. There is a spiritual element and, a, and an alien element also that will help you with your spirituality if you let it. Okay. And I just had one more question. Now, um, oh, sorry. Oh, well, I just wanted to say now you have come through this and you're more enlightened about it. The green color is very healing. Okay, thank you so much. Um, my last question was just, when I uh, meditate, I've just been finding this attachment to like feline beings and like cats and I don't understand why that is. I thought I was connecting with a dragon once and um, I kind of called it and when it appeared to me, I saw like something that was very feline. It was, it was like a cat. And I, I just- Was I'm it a large having... cat or a small cat? Um, it was pretty small. It was like able to fit in my arms. Very well. There are many cat-like beings in the universe, in the galaxies. I am a very large cat-like being. But cat-like beings are very comforting and have uh, a great message for Earth eventually. They were worshipped by the Egyptians for a reason. Uh, in fact, the Blue Avians were the ones that sort of uh, started that because they're, they have a very uh, intelligent cat-like species in their neighborhood. So they, they sort of were a very loving and intelligent group of beings. So whenever you see uh, a cat in your dreams, whenever you see a dragon, this is a protective sort of a calming source. Yeah, the cat was there to tell you that there was nothing to be afraid of. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, to Kerr, as always, we love you so much, and I wish we could just chat with you all day long, but you are busy, and we're... Yeah, um... Last question before you leave. Yes. About Trump, you said that you don't think he's going to announce about first contact because he will be embarrassed in public? Yes. I don't think it's possible to be more embarrassed than what he already experienced, but I know that after 2020, which is going to be a president, he will have to do something will, about it because too many factors are going to be at play. You realize that embarrassment is in the eyes of the beholder. If they believe they are going to be embarrassed, they will be. But if they believe that it is fine, they still may be embarrassed, but it is not, they may be more willing to talk about it. At this time, Trump is proving himself. He feels that he has to prove that he is going to be okay. He does not have the support of all the world or even all the United States. So he's doing as many things as possible to prove himself. That will not be one thing that will prove anything that he talked about in his uh, candidacy. It has actually not been brought up in the, the run for the president, any talk about disclosure or first contact. And so he will stay away from these subjects until they are broached by someone else. Ah, okay, I understand, thank you. Yes.
Okay. Um, Angie really wanted to ask you a question to Kurt before you leave. Can continue, Angie. Hi, to Kurt. Um, <clears throat> uh, we've met before, and it was when we were meeting with the um, Novan Triad Collective, the Blue yes. Lines of Sirius B. Yes. Sorry, I'm emotional. Um, could you please ask Dorex for me to amplify his presence? Absolutely. And he will. There's no question that okay. Thorax has a place with your people. Now, he is bringing some information that is very good and strong, but do not be discouraged. He will be with you. There is some information that he's, um, that I'm channeling, that I have no idea what it is all about, but, um, he does, and I trust him totally. But I really need yes, he will, more. You know. Things will be identified when they are necessary. He will, he will bring the um, definitions, if you will, to the, to the table whenever they are ready to be discussed. Okay. Thank you very much. You are That's welcome. Fun. And much love to you. Be well. And to you, thank you. Okay, thank you so much to her for joining us today. We're wondering um, if anyone else would like to join us and uh, we appreciate everything you do. Very well. Thank you very much for having me. I am glad that I am able to inform you about some situations. Not everything I can speak about, but I do tell you as much as I can. We love you. Namaste. Namaste. Have a wonderful day. I am Signon from the Wait a minute. The Federation of Light. I was just checking to make sure the room had no negative energy. Hello, Signon. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. There are people that need to know more about us. What is your questions? I do not know what the, the lack of information is, so I do not want to go into a soliloquy without meaning. Okay, well, um, I know we did have some questions for you. Um, I would like just, just to ask quickly though, if you could could please elaborate more on the Federation of Light and what you guys do because there's a lot of stuff out there on our internet about you and I am very curious to hear your perspective. Well, I imagine it is a matter of perspective. When someone takes action, it is seen either as a good action or a bad action. It is seen in one light or another. We are a positively charged group of people, group of entities, if you will. We are looking to do the work that we find to be our highest excitement. We are bringing um, positivity to the earth and helping it to rise up. We are not interfering directly with them but we are definitely interfering with the spirituality segment, the energy segment, and the vibrational segment. Is that what they have been saying about us? Um, 
there's a whole lot of stuff. So I have heard that. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what race are you from? It doesn't matter. I'm not one that identifies myself as a specific kind of race or person. I am part of the collective that is called the Federation of Light, and we work together, and therefore we don't identify ourselves individually, except by name and by personality. If I am from one race and you are from another, can we not be the same in many ways? Yes, I absolutely agree with that. Cool. All right. Uh, so therefore, why differentiate ourselves one from another when we can be together no matter who we are? Yes, I feel that deeply. Thank you. Okay. Um, we did have some questions lined up here. Um, so first, I would like to ask... Um, uh, well, Michelle has a question, it sounds like, specifically for you. So, Michelle, go right ahead. Well, first I would like to know why you will not identify which race you belong to, because the Galactic Federation of Light of a whole bunch of races. And of course. There's no differenti there's no, there's not inherent problem with speaking about that specifically that I can conclude. No, it's just my choice to be part of the whole and not separate myself by species or race. I see. <clears throat> what other questions do you have? I'm going to hold off for my second question for a moment. Okay. All right, um, we had some questions coming in. Um, Amran was asking if um, there's a, he heard somebody said there's a meteorite apparently possibly on its way to Gaia. He's asking if this is true and if it is related to Nibiru or not. This is information that I can share with you. No, there is not an asteroid on its way at this time. There, well, let me put it this way. There is always an asteroid on its way to Gaia or parts of the solar system, but they do not always have to hit them. And your revolution around the sun will help you to avoid it. And it does have nothing to do with Nibiru. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, and we had a question from Kina asking um, about, is it true that Gaia needs energy? Can we open energetic portals to facilitate the energy exchange? Gaia will always need energy. She just was um, filled with fourth dimensional energy from the anomaly. However, uh, always she needs energy that because there is so much being taken from her, from the different energies in the solar system and galaxy, from the center of the galaxy itself, because that opening is still there, and she is still facing the center of the galaxy, and energies are coming to her from there, and energies are going out uh, from her to there. So, yes, many things you can do is send energy to her daily. And there are several different ways to do this. You may uh, bring in energy from the universe and bring it down to her, or you may just bring your personal energy to her and ask her to cleanse it and make it more positive so that it can be resurging into the, system, uh, the human collective. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from Sheer. Yes. Greetings. Yes. Uh, I have a couple of questions. The first question is going to be, when you are looking at the mirror, what kind of race do you see? When I look at the mirror? Yeah, what do you see? I see myself. 
Damn. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, second question is about rules and regulations. Uh, I know that you are ch in charge of all the rules and regulations uh, concerning the earth. Like if someone wants to come and do first contact, then he has to come for you and get your permission. So how do you see no, yourself that in is first not, contact? That, that is not quite true. We must we must all get be together on that decision. The Galactic Council and many of the other alliances come together. We may be one of the great uh, groups that has a lot of opinions and a lot of people that make decisions. However, we will not make a decision that will go against the Galactic Council and all the other alliances that are with us trying to help this planet. Now I know that it has been said that we do make final decisions about some things, but that is only our agenda. We do not make decisions that would affect all the other alliances as well. We will make decisions that will affect some things on Earth, but we will not overstep our friends and colleagues and allies to make decisions that would might harm or our relationships. Those are important to us. I see. And last question. Do I have any ties to the Galactic Federation or to you personally? Yes. You have ties to many of the different federations due to who you are with uh, the Remulac area. Ah, okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from David. David. Oh, uh, going to have to go back to him. I think he dropped out somehow. Um, okay, we have a question from Carolina. She is asking, uh, are some of us humans working with you as a part of the Federation? And if so, what roles do we have? Everyone works with us in one way or another, or they work with some form of an alliance somewhere. People's belief systems are that so that they will understand that there is someone out there that they identify with in the universe as friends, as neighbors. Some will identify with more than one. Some will identify with us. Some will identify with Gurkfrick Nier and us and Ashtar Command and Council of Nine and whoever, Orion Council. We, there are several, several different councils out here and several different opinions about how things should be run. Then there's also the uh, councils that are running things in a malevolent sort of way. And those councils are also um, in touch with us. They do have an opinion they do have a vote because we are all here together. So we do not, um, we are inclusive, let's put it that way. We are not ones that will not take into consideration all things that are to be said and heard. Okay. However, if it is a negative thought process that we come across, we will question it. Okay, I see. Thank you. Um, Sheena has a question. Are you able to unmute, Sheena? Um, I wonder if she is there. I didn't see that she had posted a question in the side. So, Sheena, um, if you come back, please let me know. Um, we have a question from Michelle again. Sheena, go ahead. She Hello? Sheena. Hello? Good. Yes, now I can hear you, Sheena. Okay. Um, uh, I was wondering uh, um, yeah, in connection to you. 
I, I did not hear that. You're very soft. Uh, I wonder, uh, do I uh, have any connection to, to you? Uh, to you your, have connections to, your... to... Yes, you have you have connections to us and a couple other different councils. Your thought process is uh, positive and we encourage that. So yes, there are some connections. Okay. Um, also, I wonder um, well, if there is any important messages for me, positive ones. <laughs> I, I cannot hardly hear you. Uh, I'm also wondering if there is any positive messages for me. Positive messages for you? Yes, you have been moving forward quite steadily. Yeah. But there is coming a small bump for you that uh, will take a little time to get through. But you're you'll be fine. Continue. Yes. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't hear anything of your answer. Okay, uh, Sheena, you can go back to the recording to um, listen. It must be your internet. It's very choppy. Pretty hard to hear you. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Much love. I'm looking. Much Thank love. You. Okay, uh, Michelle. Hi. Can you tell me your name again? I forgot what you said it was. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say my name. It's not important. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm trying to work with discernment. And, discernment uh, is a good thing. It is a good thing. Um, and so I was wondering, in your perspective, you with no name and thing, um, what do you, how do you handle when you all feel that their energy that is trickery kind of energy? How do you distinguish in a way that be, in the way you use is, it possible we could use that method also to discern the energies with which we are dealing. First Whether of all, are... let me clarify something. I do. I'm trying to stay away from non-important subjects, but this subject is important to me, and I believe that it is important to uh, be aware of the energy that is around you. If you are made and are living in positive energy, you will definitely know if there is a trickster around you. If, if you are in questionable energy all around you day to day, you may not know that because you are fluctuating between positive and negative energy or perhaps even neutral energy. So what it is, is you must educate yourself to understand what it is that's pushing you forward in a positive way. If this energy is not going to push you in a positive direction, then it is a questionable energy. It is a questionable thought process. It, if it brings you into doubt about yourself or people around you, then it is a questionable energy. Now, is that the kind of answer you were looking for or were you looking for something different? Because there are other ways to answer that question. Um, that is true for me. I mean, that works. But I was just wondering, when I personally feel trickster energy and I distance myself or send love and light or healing to that, um, yes. I was just wondering if you all had a technique by which when and if you encounter it, you would recommend to... Kukulo as a whole, because, you know, we all get starry-eyed about people with information, and sometimes it's not super healthy. 
There is much information given out there in your world that is not good and not healthy and doesn't really inform because it's not true. But if you find trickster energy, you must send light to it. You must send your positive energy to it. But you must be sure that you know what you're doing because some trickster energy is uh, that energy that will send its energy to you first meaning that you will be affected by it before you affect it. So be aware that your positive energy is your way of discovering what you are dealing with. So always bring in the thought process of prayer. Always bring in the thought process of, is this um, relating to my spirit in a good way? Is this relating to my life? Is this, if it's information that you don't need, why listen to it? I mean, some of this information that is very negative or means nothing to you, why should you retain it or even listen to it? Only choose that those people with information that helps you grow and helps you be enlightened, helps you to process the spirituality that is in the all around you. You shouldn't listen to people that are just blowing hot air and may sound intellectual or whatever, but are saying nothing. They're just saying blah, 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 this, blah, 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 that. And saying, oh, you're, you're doing this and, and you're doing that when they don't even know what you're doing in many senses, but they, they conclude that they are always right. Now, I do not conclude that I am always right, but I can tell you this, I will deal with the positivity of every person. And if I find that someone is not dealing with me in their positivity, I will know. And I will call them out on it and ask them why. Now, if you're dealing with all kinds of information from Earth, that doesn't make any sense to you or doesn't mean anything to you, then let it go. Does that Thank answer you. your question? You. You're welcome. I like the way your mind works because you don't just accept things for what they are. You question them and evaluate them. And I believe that is something that more people should do. More people should evaluate what they're listening to, what they put into their brains, and, and look for more light-sensitive material. Look for this material that is edifying and positive. Of course, there are those that want to know about the negativity because they think that it will help protect them from it. But knowing about negativity doesn't protect you from it. It actually pulls your interest into it because it's mysterious. It's maybe um, very intellectual or very, it sounds very interesting. But why be involved in it if it does you no good? If it doesn't push you forward, then it brings you backward. And, and whenever you encounter negativity, doesn't the positivity have a way of dealing with that that is genuinely positive and you know how to, to deal with it in many ways because you're dealing with the positivity and you know what negativity is all about. So if you, if you uh, get the positive charge into your life, then you move in a positive direction. That is what you will be attracted to. Yeah. And I know that it's easy to be attracted to negativity. It's very curious, isn't it? It's very beautiful in some ways, but it's not helpful. And it ends up getting you in trouble. Yes, beautifully said. Thank you for that. Um, and I, I wanted to quickly ask in regards to the trickster energy that Michelle had been asking about, um, with proper energy shielding techniques, uh, psychic and spiritual shielding, especially um, like the attunement that Archangel Gabriel offers, his glyph 
for the violet flame shield, would you say that um, techniques like that are able to greatly um, help protect oneself from such energies? Certainly. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. There are so many ways to protect yourself, but whatever you believe is the best one, that is the way you should go. Absolutely. What resonates. Okay, beautiful. Well, um, we're pretty much needing to wrap up now. We're close to the end time. So um, I really appreciate you stopping by today and giving us some insight. And um, we definitely we appreciate your help and we wish you well. Have a good day. Namaste. Hello. Hi. Welcome back, Jim. Hi. That was awesome. Okay. How's everybody? Thank going? you so much. Oh, wonderful. Oh, good. yeah. How are you feeling, Jim? I'm feeling good. <laughs> Good. We had a lot of really cool stuff come through today. So thank you so, so, so much. Um, we can wrap up with a few blessings. Um, I know that uh, Pete had offered to do a blessing so um, earlier on. So Pete, please go right ahead. Hi. Um, okay, I'll start right now. All right. <sighs> We haya maya haya da ya bako yo hori ya haira kayo to yo hora ya. Ya mi ya haira ya kayo to do yo kora ya ya na ta ya na kaya. Ya ma hiya ra kayo to do kaya choro la ra kia na na. Ya ho si ya ma na ya. Ya hai si na ya ma ya. Ya mi ya sa na yo ma yo ko yi si ni a ma ya. Ya hai ya hai ri ha ha na ma ho yi ti ti ya hai ya la ka yi ki ya ma yo ko ra ya ma na ya. Blessing. We are just one of the peoples that observe your world with great interest and see that there are much uh, light going into your species and much light coming out. We pray that you continue to move forward in the same speed that you have come from zero. Much love to you, and we will be watching. Beautiful, thank you so much. Okay, um, Brian? Hello there, can you hear me okay? Yes. Kielia sate kashia tatana. Yesaka koko sho to kuatia. Lia tanani se kikakate so chesti. Yakanani se kat kolos to tuati. Anasaka tia lia tan nia kataki yakak. Uso lo to noa sasha kati kati. Alaso shanani yakotua. Isi lia takani ye hoto tuatia. Sotoa. Your peoples are now beginning to understand that there is light outside of your own world, that the connections to the universe are stronger than you thought, and that your dreams of becoming a part of this great universe will be answered one day, and it's not far off, and you will be part of us, and we will welcome you as our friend. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Uh, I will finish up with a blessing and we can close for today. Mahara Nahayasuya Sukoto Shonto Hoea 
The distance between us is not important. What is important is the understanding between us. What is important is the understanding of God. And what is important is the spirit that will guide you through many things. Let the spirit guide you and let the light be part of who you are in your everyday life and everyday existence. For that is what is important for you for now. Wow, thank you so much, Jim. This was another amazing webinar. We really appreciate you coming by and doing this for us. Um, are you, do you know yet about next Saturday? I don't, I won't be here next Saturday. I will be okay. away. All right, then we will get something else in the works. So um, thank you everybody for joining. We had some new people today, which is super exciting. And I do apologize to those who um, we were unable to get their questions answered. You can always book a session with any awesome channeler, including Jim. Um, and stay were, there a lot in of our questions? were there still a uh, lot of questions? There were there were a few that um, just a few that ended up getting missed, but not tons. So um, you know, in in the future, we might be able to work out some sort of a or think of thinking of ideas to take care of the questions that don't get answered because um, sometimes they flood okay. in really fast. So. Because if, if it's a really important question, have them send it to me and I will answer it or I'll channel an answer for them if, if okay. it didn't get answered today. Okay, beautiful. That's very kind of you. Thank you, Jim. Um, well, I just, I, I think it's really important for everybody to get their questions answered. Yeah, so. absolutely. So if, if there's something really important, send it to Jim Reiki at gmail.com and I will see what they say about it. It's very sweet. Okay. Thank you. thank you. Okay. Well, then we're right. going to wrap up for today. Thank you everybody for joining. Stay up to date on our events, humancolony.org. We also have a Facebook page. We have a Facebook group that is private and a Facebook group that is public. And we um, also have stuff on Google Plus, and you can find us all over. So subscribe to Hukalo 2 for our live events like this. Subscribe to Hukalo TV on YouTube for all of our videos where we put everything there. And keep being awesome. Thank you, everybody. Much love. Have a good day. Good to see you all. Love you. <laughs> Bye-bye.